Good afternoon. Thank you for watching my video. So lately I've been studying assembly language for the sake of programming a microchip PIC microcontroller, particularly for the 18F series. And in a textbook I was reading, which I won't mention the name of, uh, it, it starts talking about the status register. In fact, if I look at this guide, which was from 2000, a lot of the information contained herein actually just shows up verbatim in my textbook, along with diagrams and pictures. So anyway, I typed in status register on the Google Chrome search, and I'm just going to record everything that deals with the status register. So the status register shows up in the section on the CPU and ALU. Here it is again. So this is on page 108. Well, before I really get into it, I'd just like to say that, you know, there's a sea, an ocean of information that covers the PIC chip. And so it's easy to get lost. And that's why I'm just picking everything out that relates to the status register. It's that important. So how does this status register relate to the CPU and the ALU? And this section is going to cover that. Introduction. The central processing unit is responsible for using the information in the program memory instructions to control the operation of the device. Many of these instructions operate on data memory. To operate on data memory, the arithmetic logical unit, ALU, is required. In addition to performing arithmetical and logical operations, the ALU controls the state of the status bits, which are found in the status, the status register. The result of some instructions force status bits to a value depending on the state of the result. The machine codes that the CPU recognizes are shown in Table 5.1 as well as the instruction mnemonics that the MPASM uses to generate these codes. The textbook I was reading rec recommended that for prerequisite knowledge it's important to take a course in digital like binary electronics and it's true and it would be helpful to know that to fully understand how the ALU works with the status register arithmetic logical unit ALU. PIC micro devices contain <laughs> the ALU is a general purpose arithmetic and logic unit. It performs arithmetic and Boolean functions between the data in the working register and any register file. The WREG register is directly addressable and in the SFR memory map. Operation of the ALU and WREG register. So here's the ALU and I'll start up here. An 8-bit literal from instruction word and I guess the ALU is going to perform arithmetic so it, it relies upon the status register for like carry bits 
well, I won't try and add too much of my own insight, but like, I guess the W reg register, um, literals can be written to it, and I guess it's the ALU that does the arithmetic, and so a 8-bit literal is, well, one byte, and performing mathematical operations sometimes causes like an overflow beyond 8 bits, or like digit carries and things like that, and so then the status register is used to uh, deal with those extra pieces of information related to digital calculations. That's in my own words. So anyway, I said I was going to describe this, so that's why the uh, status register is pointing to the ALU, because it's dealing with carry bits. And I'll read. I'll get to reading this anyway, as to what all these, uh, what do you call them, acronyms are. And uh, special function registers and general purpose registers, so this is the RAM. And I guess it's the AL ALU is what maybe fetching and storing from RAM. And again, the ALU works by the W reg register fetching different uh, literal values, things like that. Anyway, uh, the ALU is 8 bits wide and is capable of addition, subtraction, multiplication, shift, and logical operations. Unless otherwise mentioned, arithmetic operations are two's complement in nature. In two operand instructions, typically one operand is the working register, W reg register. The other operand is a file register or an immediate constant. In single operand instructions, the operand is either the W reg register or a file register. The 8x8 eight eight multiplier operates in a single cycle, placing the 16-bit result in the prod H, prod L register pair. Depending on the instruction executed, the ALU may affect the values of the carry C, digital carry DC, 0, Z, I'm Canadian, overflow OV, and negative n bits in the status register. The C and DC bits operate as a borrow bit and a digit borrow out bit, respectively, in subtraction. See the sub LW and sub WF instructions in the instructions section for examples. So forgive me, I read the whole section on the ALU and W reg, but it pretty clearly illustrates how the status register is being used. Here is the next page which I'm going to skip over, and then it gets to the status register 5.6. The status register shown in register 5.1 contains the arithmetic status of the ALU. The status register can be the destination for any instruction as with any other register. Okay, this is the right way to do things. So I opened up the paint program and uh, now I have uh, the status register on the screen. So I'll start reading this again. Status register. The status register shown in register 5.1 contains the arithmetic status of the ALU. The status register can be the destination for any instruction as with any other register. If the status register is the destination for an instruction that affects the Z, DC, C, OV, or N bits, then the right to these five bits is disabled. These bits are set or cleared according to the device logic. Therefore, the result of an instruction with the status register as destination may be different than intended.
for example, the CLRF status will clear the upper three bits and set the Z bit. This leaves the status register as 000U, U1UU, where U equals unchanged. It is recommended, therefore, that only BCF, BSF, SwapF, MoveFF, and MoveWF instructions are used to alter the status register because these instructions do not affect the Z, C, DC, OV, or N bits of the status register. For other instructions not affecting any status bits, see Table 5.1. Note the C and DC bits operate as a borrow and digit borrow bit, respectively, in subtraction. Should I go to 2. Point or 5 1. So this shows all of the mnemonic operands in assembly language. And then in this section, it shows the status bits affected in this column here. And here on page 118 of the PDF file, is the register for the status register. As I have read, the first three bits are unimplemented, and the negative bit, which is, I guess, this one, this bit is used for signed or arithmetic, two's complement. It indicates whether the result was negative. ALU MSB equals 1, 1 equals result was negative, 0 equals result was positive. So 1 or a 0 here. Bit 3, overflow bit. This bit is used for signed arithmetic, 2's complement. It indicates an overflow of the 7 bit magnitude which causes the sign bit, bit 7, to change state. Overflow, one equals overflow occurred for signal, for signed arithmetic in this arithmetic operation. Zero equals no overflow occurred. Bit 2, zero bit, one equals the result of an arithmetic or logic operation is zero. Zero equals the result of an arithmetic or logic operation is not zero. Bit one, digit, carry, borrow bit. For add WF, add LW, sub LW, or sub WF instructions, one equals a carry out from the fourth low order bit of the result occurred. Zero equals no carry out for or from the fourth low order bit of the result. Note, for borrow, the polarity is reversed. A subtraction is executed by adding the two's complement of the second operand. For rotate, RRF, RLF instructions, this bit is loaded with either the bit 4 or bit 3 of the source register. Bit 0. C. Carry borrow bit. For add WF, add LW, sub LW, and sub WF instructions. 1 equals a carry out from the most significant bit of the result occurred. 0 equals no carry out from the most significant bit of the result occurred. Note, for borrow, the polarity is reversed. A subtraction is executed by adding the two's complement of the second operand. For rotate instructions, the bit is loaded with either the high or low order bit of the source register. And I guess I'll just read the legend. R is a readable bit, so here's some R's. 
readable bits. W is a writable bit. U is unimplemented bit, read as zero. N, where does that show up? N, or minus N, is that what that says? Value at POR reset, power on reset or something. Number one equals bit is set. I guess that would show up here as a one. It doesn't. Zero bit is cleared. I guess that's these. X bit is unknown. So this shows up in the Google Chrome word search for status register. I'm not sure exactly what it pertains to. This is on page 120. I don't know what the previous section talks about yet. But there's some design tips and the status register comes up. I cannot seem to modify the status register flags. Answer 2. If the status register is the destination for an instruction that affects the Z, DC, C, OV, or N bits, then the write to those bits is disabled. These bits are set or cleared based on device logic. Therefore, to modify bits in the status register, it is recommended to use the BCF and BSF instructions. Okay, this is page 109 of the PDF of the data sheet, which shows the assembly language instructions or mnemonic operands instruction set and BCF and BSF is in this bit oriented file register operations and what's this this is the description column so uh, BCF and BSF bit clear F of like whatever maybe file register specific SFR or general purpose RAM it's talking about maybe so bit set or bit clear so maybe that's how to go about code through code to adjust the bits in the status register so that was that I'm gonna move on to whatever shows up next here so in case you haven't noticed <laughs> I'm a novice and I don't really know what I'm talking about yet I've heard of bank switching and I know that that's like because there's different RAM locations that can be stored and then different chips have different banks of is it RAM? <laughs> yeah, it must be RAM. So you have to s switch banks. Mm. I don't know, maybe a C compiler would take care of that, but this is assembly language. Uh, bank select register. I'll read the whole thing. The need for a large general purpose memory space dictated a general purpose RAM banking scheme. A special function register named BSR selects the currently active general purpose RAM bank. Only the lower middle of the BSR register, BSR3 whatever, is used. This allows access to potentially 16 banks. Direct long addressing mode is limited to 12-bit addresses. This also allows accesses to any of the 16 banks. BSR will always read zeros and writes have no effect. All data memory is implemented as static RAM. Uh, move LB bank instruction has been provided in the instruction set to assist in selecting banks. If the currently selected bank is not implemented, any read will return all zeros and all writes are ignored and the status register bits will be set cleared as appropriate for the instruction performed. I don't even know what this is talking about because I haven't read it yet. This is page 151. I'm just going to read the one sentence and move on and maybe I'll know where to find it later if I somehow learn about this. This is the section dealing with memory. When using the auto increment, 
or auto decrement features, the effect on the FSR is not reflected in the status register. For example, if the indirect address causes the FSR to equal zero, the Z bit will not be set. Okay, so in the section data memory organization, it's talking about, well, I'll read this. Indirect addressing requires the use of the file select register, FSRs. Each FSR holds a 12-bit value that can access any location in the data memory map. Okay, next. I'll just drop this in for later study. I won't claim to understand it at this point. Control registers shows the SSP, STAT register with while register 19.2 shows the SSP con register. Register 19.1 SSP stat synchronous serial port status register. So is this even dealing with a status register or this is like something else? It deals with the serial ports or something. Same with this, the CAN module and status registers. So there's a few other SFRs, if that's correct, that have their own status registers. Now this is dealing with the actual status register here, so I'll just read it in. Status register as destination. If an instruction writes to the status register, the ZC, DC, OV, and N bits may be set or cleared as a result of the instruction and overwrite the original data bits. For example, executing CLRF status will clear register status and then set the Z bit leaving 00000100B in the register. Uh, I gotta go, so I'm gonna cut this short, but I don't know, status register shows up here. And I don't know, this is page 931. Some sample code and the status register shows up. Okay, thanks for watching.